today we're here at Bay Path Humane Society of Hopkinton outside with Roadblock for a moment who's looking for a home here. I'm about to head into the real life room with Liz Jeffress, the executive director, to talk about her life and her work here and life beyond in Hopkinton as well. So look forward to having that conversation with her. Right, Roadblock? <laughs> Hi, Liz. Uh, thank you for having me here today to meet with you and learn more about you. I understand we are in the real life yes. room here at Bay Path. Can you tell a little bit for starters what the real life room is all about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the real life room was a concept um, that we used to get to get the grant that ended up paying for most of this room. Um, we would always joke in the shelter, it's, you know, a very small building. Um, and especially in the winter, it's hard to interact with the animals. So, mm -hmm. you know, people would come in to see a dog and it's like, hope you brought your coat because you're going outside to hang out with the dog because there's no space. Mm -hmm. So um, we wanted a room where people could just sit with an animal without a busy lobby. And so we wrote the grant as you know the real life room it's so real and um and we got the grant is from especially for pets um which is a local pet store mm -hmm. and um and yeah the name stuck but yeah the idea was to to have this this room we're going to put the couch and make it like a living room and we could come in and simulate real mm -hmm. life but um <laughs> you know <laughs> it's just be i mean it's it's a great space we use it all the time um we use it for, you know, staff meetings, volunteer training, dog mm -hmm. evaluations. Wow. We do behavior evaluations, decompression um, for mm -hmm. dogs that just get here and are stressed and it's too yeah. much to be in the shelter. They can just come hang out here. We have volunteers doing training with animals in here. Um, it's been used for kitten adoption events when they come out of foster. It's been used to house um, cats when, like, we've helped with a couple of hoarding situations, like as an intake mm, okay. area for that. Mm -hmm. um, we do um, photo shoots in here. Photo These shoots. are the stuffed dogs for when our <laughs> photographer comes in to take real dogs and put them in with the stuffed dogs. Uh -huh. But, um, wow. Yeah, it's in an office. There's uh -huh. a desk over there. And so it's everything. So, yeah, it is, that's real life. Yeah, it's yeah. It's everything. It has a lot of stories about uh, the yeah. animals uh, from here. Hmm? Yep. Yeah, it's like a little tiny house. Uh, it is, it, yeah. It's nice. Mm -hmm. I've it never is, been in good. a real life. <laughs> uh, room before. Get ready. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> so what brought you to Hopkinton to be in the company of so many dogs and cats? Well, um, I was living in Hopkinton for like a year or so. Um, my husband had lived here, for, ha has lived here since like 1999. Mm. 19, yeah, about 1999. And so I moved in, we got married and all that. And I, I knew this place was here. Um, when I actually like a year or two before I lived out in Colorado oh. and I'd f flown home to visit my mom in Northborough and you know I was volunteering at a shelter out there just animal, all animals all the time and I'm like mm -hmm. I come home for the weekend I'm like you know you need a pet mm -hmm. <laughs> so I brought her here I remember coming here I'd never been here before and I'm like oh this place is cool and I made her get a cat and um so by the time I moved back from Denver, and by the time I, a couple of years later, I ended up here, I knew this, I knew this place was here and I would always think like, oh, I want to volunteer here. I want to mm. volunteer here. But I know like how neurotic and obsessive I am. And I said, I knew that, you know, once I sign up, mm -hmm. just like the shelter in Denver and the shelter in Florida, when I worked, when I lived there, it's like, it becomes an obsession and mm -hmm. I'll be here all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not ready to, I'm not going to make that commitment until I'm really ready Right. because I'll come here and then I'll see the animals and I'll think about them every five minutes and mm -hmm. I'll go down there and then I will have no life again. Mm -hmm. So I was like, mm. but then I, um, so I signed up and I, I got a call like for like t t two months later because I think it was a, a waiting list and, and then I started up and um, started volunteering on the, the weekends and um would come in both days because I worked during the week, so I, I couldn't, the time timing wouldn't allow, but I ended up doing both days, you know, mm, and I just wow. left it, immediately uh -huh. fell in love. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. And then after a year or so, it, uh, I had always kind of watched to see if there was like job openings. Mm. I was too afraid to ask. And then I saw that there was and mm -hmm. um, went for it. And the job opening is 
Uh, well, at the t- it was an assistant manager, okay. and it was like mm-hmm. uh, I saw it on I think Craigslist, and it was like, oh, you need um, vet tech experience and management experience, and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. of which I had neither. Uh-huh. But um, I just figured, you know, I'm like I'll figure it out. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I applied, and you know, they they knew me, and um, and so I got the job as assistant manager, mm-hmm. and then subsequently manager, and then. Um, and then executive director, which wow. wasn't, didn't exist before. So uh-huh. We created it. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. And how good for Bay Path. Yeah. Uh, you've been here five years? Uh, yeah, five. Mm-hmm. Yep, over five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, five years in October. Wow, wow. That's uh, quite a story, a way to come in. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> you can... <laughs> <laughs> Your work was a little different uh, yeah. from the animal world. Yes. Uh, you uh, you were previously working in finance. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, uh, I went to school for economics and then um, yeah worked in the financial industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and I uh, while I was volunteering here, I was get I had just gotten some insurance licenses like life, accident, and health, and I was going to be studying for uh, my series six, mm-hmm. and I just. I was just not, it was boring. I found it very boring. And I, I just remember like, it was just this dichotomy of like so much, like I felt like so much passion and excitement being here and then Mm. I'd be at work. And I remember like be nagging people to take their like required minimum distributions. Are you, you're going to get a penalty from the IRS. And you know, I was just like, if they don't care, like I certainly don't, you know, Mm. I was like, ah, Mm. I gotta get out of here. It just, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. So. Noticing that more and more as yeah. you're volunteering and yeah, yeah, uh, I was just like, no, it's, it's something's off. I got to do something. Mm. You know, I got to do something about this. But so. it's a big, brave leap, right? Yeah, it's a big one. From what you studied <laughs> for and yeah. felt your calling was for. Yeah. Yep. But um, when you were uh, growing up, where did you grow up? I grew up in Northborough. Uh, not that yep. far then. Yep. Nope. And I um, went to Algonquin. Mm-hmm. Graduated there in '99, and um, I was, I was so shy. Mm. I mean, like uh-huh. I was very, very shy, and um, so, yeah. So then I, you know, so I went off. I, I ended up going to an all-girls school, and mm-hmm. um, and I remember, and then I worked out of college for like a year in Boston and the financial industry, and then I moved down to Florida, oh, yeah. and um, that's when I first started volunteering at a shelter, uh-huh. but I mean, I was still really shy, and I remember, like, being, like, nervous to, like, go volunteer, and I'm like, you're gonna be in the way, and, mm-hmm. you know, but mm-hmm. I remember it was, like, a big deal, I'm going to my orientation, like, um, but yeah, and then it just, that whole animal world just sucks mm-hmm. you in. Uh-huh. Was there, um, you know, what got you involved with animals in Florida? Is that thinking back to childhood? And sometimes, you know, we have these circles or uh, this interest we go back to. Sometimes it's from early play or having animals at home. Can you think of any? Yeah, I mean, I was always a big big animal lover. I didn't have any big exposure. Like, you know, I hadn't had a shelter experience when Mm. I was little or Mm. anything. But, you know, we. I, I just, you know... (laughs) <laughs> nagged my way from starting with guinea pig and bunny <laughs> cat uh-huh. to dog and uh-huh. I just nagged my yeah. way through all the do- animals <laughs> that I could get and mm-hmm. you know just you know the little thing you going to the zoo or going to farms and stuff I always just uh mm-hmm. just always loved animals and but you know like high, high school college just you're so busy you know and I was working in Boston but then when I got when I was down in Florida my schedule allowed the time for that and um it was down in Naples, and mm-hmm. they have a really, really nice, um, really nice humane society organization, very mm-hmm. well funded, and mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. lots of stuff going on down there, lots of activities, and um, I ended up go, being there seven days a week. I mean, they wow. wouldn't let me go in when they weren't <laughs> open because they were closed Sundays uh-huh. and Mondays, but I uh-huh. weaseled my way into that organization, uh-huh. so they'd let me go in seven days a week just to hang out with the animals. Wow. <laughs> what did what did you like best about that setting or you know you th- said they had so many offerings such a great center yeah I mean at that time I was very much interested in you know the the hand just just being with the animals like mm-hmm. they had these beautiful yards of course the weather was yeah. nice they could be sure. outside all the mm-hmm. time so doing like 
I was really interested in doing like the play groups because there wasn't too much of that going on. So there was a couple of us that kind of started trying to do more socialization mm-hmm. with the animals because mm-hmm. they're, you know, they, they like yeah. companionship, people and other animals. And so we did a lot of that. I didn't, I mean, there was this whole big aspect, especially Naples. They, they do so many um, incredible events and stuff. I didn't, I didn't do anything with any of that. I mean, mm-hmm. developed, I was just, I want to be around animals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that has been something going on all your life since you yeah. were young. Yeah. Uh, the love of being near animals and involved. And, yeah. <laughs> and full time. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. And then the same thing in Denver, very just hands on. Um, did a couple like outreach events, but, um, and then when I came here, same, you know, same thing, animals, animals, animals. Mm-hmm. But I've definitely um, broadened my scope because, you know, there's a lot of other things that go into, you can't hang out with the animals, right. you know, there's As a lot of other director. aspects of it, uh-huh. but I also like, I've actually come to really enjoy that as, as much, mm-hmm. like interacting with the, the, the donors and the adopters and the, the people aspect of it, which is incredibly mm-hmm. important, you know, mm-hmm. you hear That's people right. say like, oh, you did the best job, you know, like animals, you get to be around animals, like I don't, I don't want to be around people, and it's like, no, this is a very, very, very people oriented business like mm-hmm. you have to really enjoy and, and like people because they make it work you know the I mean, we have like 150 active volunteers a week wow um mm-hmm. you know all the donors um all the adopters the, just the people in the community i mean what these especially these kids like oh my god they get like they're making toys you know it's not oh, you know i mean uh-huh. and there's the, the lemonade stands and they all add up but uh-huh. some of these kids are bringing in like hundreds of dollars wow. they make to- and they're like wow. so you know. And you said the list, Michael List now Center yes. comes regularly, the and they, they come every Wednesday. Brighten up the place. You oh were my saying? God, they're so much fun. Uh-huh. They're all up. We call it. It's like the party bus, at the uh-huh. minivan, and um, we have a lot of groups that come in, um, and and I think they get a lot out of it. I mean, we certainly do, and the animals do. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's yeah, very great. busy place. So it sounds come. like a big community-minded center with 150 volunteers coming in a week. Wow, yeah. that's great. Yeah, it's a lot. It's right. a lot. We actually had to, um, we are changing up our volunteer program a little bit. And so I took the application mm-hmm. off the website for just a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Just want to like redo it and see if we can um, kind of, well, it, it was always historically, it was always like, you want to walk dogs, you want to walk cats, or walk cats, not walk cats, you want to, like, socialize cats. Um, <laughs> but there's so many other things that mm, we found. Yeah. We've been trying to just, you know, leverage our volunteers or whatever. Like, they have so many other strengths, so we have them now. Like, they help us with events. Um, uh, we have an outreach committee that's less, like, you know, not fundraising events, but, like, you know, going out to schools or libraries and just wow. awareness. Mm-hmm. And Education. We have vol- yep, we have volunteers doing that. Um we have um, data entry. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so much like paperwork and stuff mm-hmm. for the to, you know for these animals, the medical, the behavior. We do evaluations. People logging in, scanning in documents. Like, mm-hmm. and there are people that love to do that too. So, so anyway, my long story or short story long. Um, I took the volunteer application off for like it's been a couple weeks now because I I left it on while I was like uh, we don't well, let's gonna we're gonna change this up a little and I mean. Bing, bing, you have a new application, you have wow. an application, you have an application. Uh-huh. And now that I've taken it down, people are seeing that it's not there yeah. in the email. More like, where is it? What's going on? Why <laughs> want to volunteer? I mean, it's crazy. Uh-huh. It's wow. crazy how many people want to help out. That's so, really exciting. It is. Uh-huh. It's, it's awesome. I'm just like, ah, You have to manage it. It's yeah. another yeah. part of your you know, job. Because people uh-huh. have lives and, you know, right. I mean, yeah, 150 volunteers. You know, this person can't do this week, but they can switch another shift. And, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's like game mm. theory <laughs> but it's it's a good problem to have I yeah mean, so many people yeah. want to help out I'm like, oh. wow that that yeah. is great news yeah it's, it's very good so what would you say is one of the most important things you've learned from animals uh, uh briefly because <laughs> i want to ask more about you too um <laughs> what i've learned about animals or learned from them as a teacher how about that um, geez. <laughs> or is, do you have a story, a greatest story um, of one animal that you learned something from or taught you? Uh, 
I yeah, I there was a dog, one of my favorites. Um, he's one on the screensaver inside on one of the laptops, but he was a dog that was um he was a dog that was with us last winter, like and he came end of January, a hound. Um, he came come from Kentucky. He had been in the prison. They do a prison mm-hmm. a lot of like places do the prison training program where they go and the inmates work with them and um and then it started to snow and snow and snow and snow and he was um he was a great dog um he had a you know he was very well trained and when that snow came last year it was very difficult on us because i mean we're stuck in there we rely heavily on our outdoor space and you know in a good winter you can't use much but this was i mean you could barely leave the door and he started to go you know, you just saw him start start to unwind because he's a hound. He came from Kentucky. You know, he's used for hunting, so not meant to be in a shelter like all the animals. But it was really particularly hard on him, and um, he really helped us. Um, you know, it was one of yeah. He could have gone. He could have gone either way. He started getting snappy and stuff. Nothing crazy, but just like okay, we got to do something. Like we have to intervene early, earlier on with this guy and we did and we did we got a plan in place for him um he was was smart and he was food motivated so there was a lot of you know a lot of things we could do and did to keep his mind intact we didn't have this which would have been nice but you know we had volunteers down in the basement with him working with clicker training and um he loved to go in the car people would take him for rides in the car Mm -hmm. um i would take him all the time but you know really really helped us streamline our like you know knowing that like okay you don't you don't know a lot of the histories of these animals but knowing like okay i know you came you were like this and then mother nature ruined everything but like you are we're not gonna let the shelter ruin you because Mm -hmm. you were not this is you are definitely a product of Mm -hmm. what's going on right now of this environment you had good infrastructure you're a good dog and we're gonna we're we're gonna help you and um it was a good lesson for us. Now we're very um, proactive with, like, if we see, you know, what anything that a dog might be um, at risk, you know, just mm-hmm. really helped us um, understand, like, the, the the stress. You know, you you know, that's a kind of the stress. whole of the dog. Uh, the what? The whole of the dog that yeah. what the dog brings, as well as the context that he was in, to give him a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. So, um, you know that they're they're so they're so sensitive. I mean, they're very resilient. But you know, just in general, he's he's a more exaggerated case of like when people adopt, they they don't. And I didn't understand this. I didn't appreciate this either. But the level of stress being in an environment like this puts on them is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And you know, we always mm-hmm. say when people yeah. adopt and. I make them like look at me and repeat it back. Like, I will not go to PetSmart, like you know, cause, okay. like immediately because people mm-hmm. are excited. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I want a dog, and you zip them in at PetSmart. People are leaning over oh, them, and okay. people are shoving dogs. In them. Yeah. You know, like, and with time, but like coming out of this, mm-hmm. uh, they need to decompress. They're mm-hmm. like cortisol level in their brain yeah. is actually it's a fact. It's up. So like, you know, just appreciating that about these animals that they are they are trying their best in really Mm -hmm. really difficult circumstance and they're being you know unintentionally pushed you know by staff volunteers by the noise by the the pace here and they're trying so hard i mean it's Mm -hmm. kind of amazing like Mm -hmm. because i i wouldn't do well you know Mm -hmm. sure in prison you know it's very stressful so um trying to make it nicer than prison but but it's hard and just understanding like what they what they go through and their resiliency thereafter it's unbelievable mm, you know mm-hmm, yeah and gus was an example of like wow he's really this is really hard on him mm-hmm. this is really getting hard on mm-hmm. him and we got to do something yeah yeah to understand more yeah. about what the dog's experience is yeah and same thing with the cats i mean they all feel it they really feel it here yeah yeah well um Thank you for uh, sharing that. I, th- I think yeah. that they probably have a lot of those stories and we learn yeah. about humans as well as yeah. animals when we work together too, yeah. right? Yeah. But I could I could do a whole uh, interview yeah, well, just on that, yeah. but we're probably running low on time. I know I had some questions about you outside of here. Sure. 
uh, which I know you said is pretty much most of your time <laughs> and attention uh, is here, but uh, you also have a family outside of Bay Path that you live with in Hopkinton, yep. and that includes your husband yep. and stepdaughter yep. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, is there anywhere in particular you as family like to be in Hopkinton or what you especially like about this town, uh, feel connected to? You've been in Denver and Florida yeah. and Northboro, yeah. uh -huh. different yeah. kinds of natural yeah. contexts. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Florida. Ah. Mm. But um, yeah, no, it's it's a great it's a great town. Um, I, you know, we love uh, you know obviously you know I'm an animal lover. I love to be outside. Um, this you know the state park and um, you know walking over by College Rock with the dogs and uh -huh. stuff like that. Uh -huh. We like to take. The dogs out for okay. walks. Um, I forgot about the other part of your family. How many animals oh, right. are at your house? Three dogs, four cats, and an African gray parrot. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but my stepdaughter is very active in um, everything, um, but uh -huh. particularly the drama club. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. So she does a lot of the, the plays and the real life, the life stuff. So it's mm -hmm. funny how many times you see, um, and I've done some stuff for Bay Path with the school system, um, just you know, seeing so many people, you know, like at the play as adoptive foster volunteers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, um, so yeah, we're at a lot of the plays, um, which are great, mm -hmm. but, uh, and, um, the other thing I, I do volunteer for hospice and, yeah, um, yeah. current, like right now, one of my, uh, assignments is at Golden Pond, mm -hmm. which again is another place where you just run into like so many people, you yeah, know, we yeah. work there, visiting someone there and, um, yeah, it's just like the long, you know, I, yeah, I've only been here about five years, but it's really like, you know, it's a small town, but yes. it's shrinking. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's getting real right. Small. But right. I like it. You uh -huh. know, I love it. Everything about it. Yeah. So many great, uh, adopters and supporters in this town. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Like a family. Yeah. Um, and with hospice, what got you involved in that worth in dealing with people at the end stage of life? Um, uh, yeah. You go um, into their homes or nursing yeah. homes? Yeah. I mean, I, I started doing it in my early 20s and when I lived in Naples mm -hmm. and uh, there's a big, big network down there. And um, I got involved with that. My father passed away when I was a kid, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. just yeah. in his sleep. So I would always been like, what's, you know, kind of yeah. like wanting to for myself to mm -hmm. to see the to go through that process and kind of see what that was about and um yeah it really obviously puts your life into perspective but um mm. you know I I I was you know I was in my early 20s so I'm like what are these are these people gonna be mad and angry and nope quite the opposite you mm. know they they everybody I ever encountered and still with what I do now is uh you know, obviously you go into homes and just respite care, but the people, the families were so grateful mm. and, and the, you know, the people that were able to, you know, that were lucid, um, were very appreciative, you know, and then sometimes they weren't, sometimes mm -hmm. they were, you know, far, pretty far gone, but you know, it's, it, it felt good. And I know in those cases, the families really appreciated it, but mm -hmm. yeah, it definitely, it's hard to, to do that. And then, you know, complain about anything in your yeah. life, you know. It gives you perspective. It does. Huh? It really does. Well, yeah. you do a lot of demanding, intense work, working with people who are dying, working with animals who need shelter, who have a lot of hard stories. Yeah. How <laughs> do you take care of yourself? I um, don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, um, I... Do you have hobbies? Yeah, or? no, I do. I, I, um... I ride my bike. I do a lot of, you know, ride my bike and yeah. rollerblade. I have a lot of great friends. I've met a lot of great people through the organization. Uh huh. Yeah. People that work here, but also, you know, people that volunteer or have adopted. Um, just really great. A lot of great friendships. You know, yeah. a lot of people mm -hmm. that you can like. It's good. It's a good balance because they know they know what you do, so they know like that you're a little off, <laughs> but you don't have to go talk about it. You know, like I'll go out with vol some volunteers, and it's not like really. Did you see Scruffy's collar? You mm -hmm. know, like we can yeah, talk about yeah. other things, but they know uh -huh. you and they know like what motivates you. You know, yeah, so it's like, yeah. you don't have to tell them if you had like you know, just had a bad day. They kind of get what that is, and yeah. you can just mm -hmm. talk about other things. But yeah, a lot of. Um, a lot of good friendships, mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of bike riding. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, and 
uh, mainly around Hopkinton, we'd see you yes. riding a bike. Yeah, yeah. uh huh. Yeah. yeah, and um, that is a great form of exercise. Yeah. So, uh, anything ahead, uh, sometimes I ask on, because I, I've been in hospice too and aware about the precious nature of life, yes. but on your bucket list of life uh, that you'd like to work toward, look forward to? Yeah, I, um, my big thing is I'd like to um, see Bay Path get a new building. Um, yeah. You know, we, mm -hmm. this building has been great, but it's, you know, been here for 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, we don't own the property, so we um, we need to uh, relocate and, and raise the funds. Um, but I think we can do it, and I think it's you know the, the certainly the demand is there. Like mm -hmm. I mean, I the the number of people coming and looking to adopt is crazy. Um, wow. Our okay. numbers continue to go up. We had a twenty percent year over year from two thousand fourteen to two thousand fifteen. Mm -hmm. So. You know, this fifteen hundred square foot tiny building with no offices and nothing. Yeah. We did. Over 1,300 adoptions. Wow, wow. And we yeah. have a huge foster network, too, which uh -huh. enables us to do that. But, I mean, we are bursting at the seams. Wow. But, you know, yeah. I think we could we could fill a, a bigger, newer building and offer more services. And mm -hmm. so that's my goal. And, wow. and so, I know, it's like a little way it's done. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it'll happen. Well, so. best wishes. It sounds Thank like you. you're on the path for that. So I see we're out of time now. And I, I, again, wish you the best with that. Thank and you're you. a good work here. And it, uh, our interview shows uh, the largeness of your heart yeah. and uh, you put, putting that into your work and your community. So thank you so much thank for you. what you do Appreciate and for this it. interview this thank morning. Hi, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of the program Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. This show introduces you to Hopkinton residents, the many interesting people who are our neighbors, and we invite them to share stories, experiences, insights, and observations from their lives. We'd like to hear who you think should be interviewed on our program. So if you know someone that Hopkinton should get to know more about, please email me and stay tuned for more episodes of Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV.